the rim. The goal of this video is to put LeBron's career into context year by year on his way to the scoring title. This isn't necessarily a recap. I just want to mention some time markers that stick out to me from every year that will really put it into perspective of how long he's been at this. With that being said, let's rewind the clock 20 years. 1,654. In his rookie season, he played against the infamous Big Four Lakers that included older 90s stars such as Gary Payton and Karl Malone. He would also go on to have a Christmas classic with a prime Tracy McGrady on the Orlando Magic, posting 32 points and 6 assists. No idea why, but this is the one game that truly dates his career for me. 3,829 James would make his very first All-Star appearance, and I might add that he's been an All-Star ever since. Not even once has he not been voted in due to injury, a slow start to the season, nothing. It hasn't even been a question each year yet. For those of you old enough to be nostalgic about it, this was the all-star game in Denver that my generation mainly remembers for being a staple of the game NBA Live 2005, which is still to this day arguably the best virtual dunk contest. I probably don't need to say that he's the only remaining active player of either the East or West from that year, but just look at some of the faces he shared the court with. Yao Ming, Allen Iverson, Gilbert fucking arenas. Is it not completely psychotic that he was voted in with these guys and is still the rightful captain of today's all-star teams? Also, this was Dwight Howard's rookie season. 6,307. His first playoff appearance. From here, he wouldn't go on to miss the playoffs until the year 2019. And another landmark that dates his career, his first playoff game would be against Gilbert Arenas' Wizards. It was also his first playoff triple-double and the 10th of his career to that point. Also, Chris Paul's rookie season. 8,400 139. The 2007 Cavaliers. In just his fourth year at age 22, LeBron would go on to miraculously make the NBA Finals with a top three worst finals roster ever. This was the year of toppling the Detroit Pistons in possibly his most famous playoff performance, and he'd face the San Antonio Spurs, who'd only had their third championship to that point. That roster included the regular trio we're familiar with, but also even more obscure older names such as Bruce Bowen, Michael Finley, and Robert Ory. We're talking guys that were around to witness Michael. Jordan still winning championships. Very obscure mention to add on here, Brandon Roy's first season in the NBA. 10,689. This would be his first run-in with the, I guess, infamous 2008 Boston Celtics. Yes, the team most responsible for making manufactured big threes mainstream way back in the day was a team LeBron very nearly ended in the second round. If he hadn't have had to score about half of his team's points in game seven, he probably would have done it. We'll also mention here for time marker purposes that this was Tracy McGrady's last remotely healthy season in the league and more or less the ending of his duo years with Yao Ming. I bring them up because they seem like two mythical figures that played decades ago, but there's very clear footage of a dominant LeBron competing against them. 12,993. His first of four MVP awards, and quite possibly the most athletic he's ever looked. Seriously, every night was some superhuman feat that nobody cared to try to explain. This was also the height of his rivalry with Kobe Bryant as the two had now won consecutive MVPs and were poised to meet in the NBA Finals. Yes, the esteemed Kobe and Gasol Lakers that we've been begging for in 2K were all but surely going to become LeBron's second Finals opponent ever. That is of course until he ran into prime Dwight Howard. You know, the dude he'd later win a championship with off the bench. The current Taiwanese All-Star? He's a crucial part of LeBron's story, and to this day, he's the last center that led his team to the NBA Finals. To date this era even further, that 09 Magic team gets some credit in changing basketball as, outside of Dwight, they mostly relied on shooters. That season, they were second in three-pointers attempted at 2,147. At the time of this recording, on February 6, 2023, the Golden State Warriors have attempted 2,278 threes through 53 games, 15,251. Back-to-back MVPs for LeBron, and even sharper expectations to make the finals as the Celtics were being called old, and the Cavs acquired what was thought to be a still impactful Shaq. It's never worth mentioning in any arguments, but yes, the same LeBron that'll probably face off against Victor Wembanyama next season was teammates with Shaquille fucking O'Neal at one point. If Shaq's name doesn't move you, the guy that the Cavs tried to get later on that season to push them over the top was Amari Stoudemire. This season would mark the final time LeBron wouldn't make the NBA Finals for eight straight years. It was also Kobe Bryant's last championship and finals appearance ever. 17,362. The Yes We Did Party. He 
takes his career into his own hands by becoming teammates with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, who were both coming off of career type seasons. So he teamed up with them when they were arguably at the apex of their careers. And today he's the only one of that trio that remains and he is still dominating. And what's now considered controversial, he loses the MVP to 2011 Derrick Rose, the best and healthiest version we'd ever get of him. Together, they finally conquer the Celtics and Shaquille O'Neal retires. He faces names such as Dirk Nowitzki, Jason Kidd, and Pedro Stoyakovic in the finals. As a matter of fact, to really date this, every player that was on the team which gave LeBron his second finals loss 12 years ago is retired. 19,045. If you're looking at the low scoring totals here, this was a lockout year which meant less games. Hopefully you'll never have to experience one of these. At long last, LeBron wins his first of many titles after ending the Boston Big Three and facing off against the younger Thunder that seemed to have a bright future. We've experienced most of James Harden's career arc by now, from a rookie to superstar to late career player, and here he was a member of the Thunder still in LeBron's first title run. A sixth man at that. Braun wins his third MVP, but doesn't get the rematch against D. Rose, who'd now torn his ACL. Little did we know this was practically the end for him. This now 11 years ago. He's currently buried on the Knicks bench, so we've also experienced pretty much his entire career arc in this time LeBron's been dominating. This was also the end of the Nets in New Jersey, as they'd relocate to Brooklyn led by Darren Williams and Joe Johnson. The Cleveland Cavaliers draft Kyrie Irving in hopes that he's the savior of the mess left behind by LeBron. 21,081. 2013 LeBron James. The really psychotic part of this is that when you do a side-by-side -side comparison of this LeBron and today's LeBron a decade later, the stats don't look that different. Clearly he was better than, but the fact that the numbers are even still comparable is unreal. Although he played Paul George in 2012, this would be the first year that it was clear he was the leader of an up-and-coming contender in the East. Not only have we also gone through most of PG's career arc since then, today he's the only active player from that roster that gave the Heat an epic series. This also marked the beginning to the end of Kobe Bryant's career, as the hope for a true rivalry with he and LeBron was officially over after the Achilles. This fully marked the end of Brandon Roy's career, as it was the final season he'd play in the league. Roy is one of the players we habitually bring up as a what-if star, so all while LeBron was dominating and winning championships, we experienced him be drafted and go away. Finally, not to be ignored, Anthony Davis's first season in the league, 23,170. The year of Kevin Durant's first and to this day only MVP award, Giannis Antetokounmpo's rookie season. People begin to swear that if he ever reaches his potential, the league is in trouble. James reaches his fourth straight NBA Finals and for the last time faces off against the Dynasty Spurs. Kawhi Leonard wins Finals MVP in a striking declaration that he may be the future in San Antonio as the others age out. 24,913. He begins his second tour in Cleveland, bringing what's thought to be a superstar level Kevin Love along to join forces with Kyrie Irving. The Golden State Warriors seemingly come out of nowhere and rip through the league, presumably becoming the new handlers of the Western Conference. With that, Stephen Curry's first MVP award and first year as a superstar player in the league. The two meet in the finals and it marks the first of four straight showdowns between them. While hard to believe, this is also the season that habitual MVP candidate Joel Embiid is drafted. 26,833, the year of the 26 16 Warriors, who 20 years later break the thought to be unbreakable 72-9 Bulls record. Steph marks the first unanimous MVP in history and forever changes the game with unheard of shooting tallies. Both franchises forever change the league as LeBron leads the charge of the first ever 3-1 comeback in finals history, setting in motion complete and utter chaos. The KD and Westbrook duo comes to an end after repeatedly failing to deliver even another finals appearance. 28,787. Kevin Durant joins the Warriors and puts a death grip on the league for years to come. Jalen Brown is drafted to the Boston Celtics, unknowingly setting their next chapter in motion. Giannis makes his first ever All-Star appearance, as he's clearly on the horizon in the East. LeBron and the Cavs turn in another great year, but don't really get close to beating the Warriors for the repeat. 31,038. James is leading the worst roster of his career since he began taking control of it as Kyrie Irving is traded, setting in motion a very weird few years in the relationship between the two. Chris Paul becomes a rocket and what would prove to be the only real test to the healthy Kevin Durant Warriors as Harden takes home to this day his only MVP award. Jason Tatum is drafted and along with Jalen Brown, the Celtics go on to establish that their core for future contention is set, nearly defeating LeBron in the conference finals. 32,543. James takes his talents to the Western Conference, joining the Lakers and sustaining the first major injury of his career, which was an eerie foreshadowing. Due to that fact, in year 16, it becomes the first 
first time since 06 that he misses the playoffs. 2019 also marks the end of the KD era in Golden State as the league transitions to the duo era. Toronto wins its first ever championship under Kawhi Leonard, who has grown to be a top player in the league when health permits. 34,241. Zion Williamson is drafted to the NBA, but also Anthony Davis is traded to the Lakers, and they instantly become contenders. Kawhi chooses the Clippers, joining Paul George, also making them contenders. The NBA enters the bubble to finish the season, and LeBron wins another title with his third NBA franchise as the best player. 35,367. Things start to go bad real quick. LeBron sustains the second injury of his career to cost him significant time. With the same obviously happening to AD down the stretch, it marks the first time ever that James loses in the first round. It comes at the hands of the eventual Western Conference champion Suns, giving Chris Paul his first ever finals appearance. They meet the Bucks, and it becomes Giannis' first NBA championship. 37,062. The Russell Westbrook trade. LeBron and or the front office torpedo this franchise for all of the near future. 38,390. And counting. Westbrook. Looking for James. He's got it. Coming to the end of the third quarter. LeBron James is shot in history. And LeBron stands alone. The NBA's all-time scoring record now belongs to LeBron James. At long last, year 20, and the record is his to do as he pleases. The craziest part about his breaking of the record is that since 2019, his scoring totals have been relatively low compared to his former years, and not even necessarily because of his age. It really came at the hands of freak accident injuries and the shortened COVID season, which while we're mentioning that, also the 2012 lockout season. That time he told a fan in the front row that he really didn't try to break the record, well, he wasn't necessarily lying. He could have definitely pushed harder in those second years with the Cavs. Regardless, this was probably overdue. At age 38, he scores as as easily as ever on a team that probably makes things more difficult than they have to for him. If I had to guess, it feels like he could play until 2025 at this exact level before taking any real decline, and even then, how far would the decline be? At the rate that he scores, he'll likely cross the 40k mark next season, becoming the only player to ever have done so. If that record stands just as long as Kareem's did, nobody would break this until at least 2062. It's been a long road. As someone who's paid intense attention to his career since at least the 07 season, I never knew I was watching the future all-time leading scorer. Through the ups and the downs, it's been a real pleasure. I'm honored to have been able to watch this greatness unfold. So, I can't believe even this late into his career, I'm still saying this. But until his next great accomplishment, the saga continues. I don't believe in pressure. Um, I think pressure is created by what you do out on the floor. And, you know, everyone else kind of gets wrapped up in, in pressure. I mean, you just go out and you just... You trust your, you trust your, you know, everything that you've been doing over the course of the years. You know, I know how to play the game of basketball, and, and that's what I will fall back on. I'll fall back on the fundamentals of the game and, and fall back on my knowledge of the game and, and the way I prepare. Um, so um, the game is fun and satisfying, but for me when I'm in it, it's not that fun and satisfying, you know, because I'm so locked in, I'm so demanding. I, I demand excellence. Um, out of myself first and then out of my teammates and I want nothing less.